Welcome to our .news program. Today, we have some exciting content to share with you. First, let's talk about how high altitude tunnels have become a new flashpoint in the tense situation between China and India. India has opened the Sala Tunnel in the northeastern state of Arunachal Pradesh, the world's longest double lane tunnel, sparking a war of words between the two countries. Both nations are fiercely competing in border infrastructure, with China refusing to open the tunnel, claiming the region as an integral part of Chinese territory, while India insists that Arunachal Pradesh is an inseparable part of India. Next, take a look at how Alibaba has cancelled the IPO plans for Kenyo amid a sluggish market. This is Alibaba's second highly anticipated IPO cancellation, followed the shelving of its cloud computing division's plans in 2023. This decision comes against the backdrop of Beijing's real estate crisis and waning confidence from foreign investors, making for a roller coaster ride. Lastly, let's discuss how the truth may be stifled if video surveillance doesn't improve. The researchers argue that generative artificial intelligence AI is changing the way false information spreads and has raised concerns about a significant amount of false information from external sources, especially China and Taiwan. AI-driven video and deepfake technology are increasingly being used to create misleading content, posing challenges for governments. Tech companies are fact-checkers in China and think tank hotel. This is just a part of our news overview for today. And there are many more details and depths to explore behind each story. Please continue watching for more in-depth coverage and to learn about more exciting stories. The High Altitude Tunnel has become a new flashpoint in the escalating tensions between China and India. India's opening of the Sala Tunnel in the northeastern state of Arunachal Pradesh has sparked a war of words between India and China, highlighting India's renewed focus on border infrastructure amid deteriorating relations with China. The tunnel is the world's longest way tunnel and provides all weather connectivity to the areas of Taoing and other areas bordering China, enhancing India's strategic and operational capabilities. China has refused to open the tunnel, claiming the region as an integral part of Chinese territory, while India insists that Arunachal Pradesh is an integral part of India. Compared to China's border infrastructure, Arunachal Pradesh's lack of connectivity is a disadvantage for India. Since 2014, India has been revamping its border infrastructure, increasing the budget for border road organization for fold. The construction of the Sela Tunnel is part of India's broader border infrastructure plan. The tunnel is seen as a statement to China that India is prepared for the long term. Alibaba原计划在香港和上海两地同时上市，预计募集资金约为一百亿美元。然而，由于市场不确定性和投资者对中国经济增长的担忧，Alibaba决定暂停IPO计划。该公司表示将继续支持菜鸟网络的发展，
This may include providing funding for fact-checkers and sharing data with civil society organizations. Monitoring video sharing platforms is also crucial. As video fact-checking has proven to be more effective in correcting misconceptions on text-based fact-checking. However, concerns over Chinese ownership mean that some organizations are cautious about using platforms like TikTok in Taiwan. There is also a need for more effective tools to monitor video content content as current verification methods are no longer sufficient. Chinese electric vehicle exports to the European Union EU have seen a significant decline at the beginning of the year due to an investigation. According to Chinese customs data, exports of electric vehicles to the vehicles to the EU dropped by nearly one-fifth in the first two months of 2024, as Brussels conducted an investigation into unfair subsidies in the industry. The data shows that a total of subventified 600 e-verses were shipped to the 27 EU member states in January and February, a decrease of 19. Six compared to the same period last year, the decline in exports is seen as revealing the complex challenges China faces internationally. The EU is nearing the imposition of additional tariffs on Chinese e-verses entering the bloc, citing evidence of illegal financial support provided by Beijing. Despite sanctions affecting oil tankers, Russia's crude oil shipments are still rebounding. This rebound is due to the completion of maintenance work at Russia's main Baltic Sea export terminals and improved weather conditions at its main Pacific ports. However, Indian refiners, as the second largest customer of Russian oil after China, have stopped accepting tankers owned by Russian state shipping companies due to intensified sanctions, resulting in delays and rerouting of Russian crude oil shipments. While overall crude oil flows have not significantly decreased at the moment, there is increasing evidence that sanctions are starting to impact Russia's oil exports. The rebound in cargo exports has boosted Moscow's oil revenue, with the total value of crude oil exports rising from $1.40 billion last week to $1.68 billion in the week ending March 2014. Han Gong the governor of the People's Bank of China, has stated that the Chinese real estate market has shown positive signals and has a solid foundation for long-term healthy and stable development. His comments come as China Bank is battling rumors of default default, with credit trading agencies Moody's and Fitch downgrading the company's status. Since Beijing implemented lending restrictions and the three red lines policy in 2021, the Chinese real estate market has been grappling with a liquidity crisis. Despite some easing of financing barriers, the slump in the real estate market continues to worsen. Former Taiwanese President Wang Yingju is expected to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing on April 8th. The Chinese government office has confirmed that Ma Yingju will lead a group of students to visit Beijing, Jiangxi, and Guangdong from April 1 Street to 11th, but did not mention the meeting with Xi Jinping. China is more inclined to negotiate with the Kuomintang and views the Democratic Progressive Party as separatists. British minister says that China's sanctions are tailor made to avoid trade disputes. Bloomberg Dongcheng Kegosaka, Jiliang Qigang, the UK's education minister, has stated that the UK government's response to China's alleged cyber attack is aimed at avoiding trade issues with Beijing. The government recently imposed sanctions on a Wuhan-based company and to individuals associated with a state-affiliated group called a PT30, accusing them of targeting UK lawmakers. Some lawmakers have criticized the limited sanctions, while China's foreign ministry has accused the UK of providing insufficient evidence. Keegan's comments suggest that the UK government is trying to strike a balance between accusing cyber rats can trade interests. Why the attack in Moscow will not slow down Russia's war on Ukraine, Ukraine. South the China Morning Post. Andrew Hammond, Drew Hammond, a researcher at the London School of Economics and Political Science, IDES, said that the terrorist attack on the Moscow Concert Hall last weekend could have an impact on the war in Ukraine. The attack, which resulted in at least 130 being deaths, highlighted the vulnerability of the Russian state, especially with security resources being diverted. To Ukraine. Despite President Putin's recent success in the elections, the regime may be more fragile than it appears. And this incident marks the second time its weaknesses have been exposed in less than a year. China to challenge Biden's electric vehicle plan at WTO or plan at WT. Associated Press it in China has filed a complaint with the World Trade Organization WTO. 
alleging discriminatory requirements on its subsidies for electric vehicles versus by the United States. The U.S. recently implemented new regulations that stipulate if key minerals or other battery components are produced by Chinese, Russian, North Korean, or Iranian companies. American car buyers are not eligible for tax credits. China believes that these policies exclude Chinese products, distort fair competition, and disrupt the global supply chain for electric vehicles. China is currently the dominant player in the global electric vehicle battery market. Five Chinese citizens were killed in a suicide bomb attack in Pakistan. Police are shocking. Al Jazeera. Five Chinese citizens and their Pakistani driver were killed in an attack by a suicide bomber on a convoy in northwestern Pakistan. The attack occurred as the convoy was traveling from Islamabad to a camp in Dasu, Bairapak Tunkwaha province. The area where the attack took place is the site of a large dam being constructed by the Chinese Waba Group Corporation. The attack on the Chinese engineers came hours after armed militants attacked a Pakistani naval airbase in the southwest, resulting in the death of at least one paramilitary soldier. The Balakisit Liberation Army Biela claimed responsibility for the attack on the naval base. China has invested heavily in resource-rich Balakisit, which borders Afghanistan and Iran, including the development of Gwadar port. The attacks on Chinese interests have raised concerns about the safety of Chinese workers in Pakistan. Response deadline set for family office applications in Singapore. Nikaija, the Monetary Authority of Singapore MAS has given family office applicants a one-month deadline to respond to their request for additional information. If applicants fail to complete this by the deadline, their tax exemption applications will be disregarded. This move comes at Singapore strengthens its procedures for four unwealth inflows following a major money laundering case last year. Observers believe that stricter procedures will help attract high net worth families who wish to use Singapore as a legitimate wealth management center, while eliminating applicants who may seek to engage in illegal activities through the financial hub. A journalist witnessed a conflict between Beijing and Philippine vessels in the South China Sea. According to the South Side China Morning Post, Chinese maritime authorities prevented a Philippine supply ship from reaching the disputed islands in the South China Sea where soldiers were stationed. This is the latest in a series of confrontations between the two countries in the disputed waters. Analysts are concerned that this situation could escalate into an international crisis involving the United States and other major global powers. China has been increasingly assertive in asserting its control over the South China Sea region, leading to increased tensions and conflicts among regional countries. The Philippines has openly opposed China's actions. The United States has condemned China's dangerous actions and expressed concern over the obstruction of Philippine vessels and the disruption of supply lines. The Pentagon stated that if the Philippines initiates its mutual defense treaty with the United States, the U.S. will be prepared to assist the Philippines. The United States, the birthplace of Tesla, has lost to China in the competition in the electric vehicle EV industry. The success of China in the EV industry is attributed to its strategic integration of resources, including battery production supply chains and market forces, explained private investor Mo Jiang Kang. He further explained that the market share of the top three EV battery manufacturers in China exceeds 57, and China has already established a network of two, seven million public charging points by the end of last year. Mo Jiang Kang compared this to the United States which has approximately 170 zero public EV chargers, and emphasized that the country's deep reliance on individual car ownership is a major obstacle. Chinese manufacturing push could lead to U.S. inflation, says New York Federal Reserve. Bloomberg. The latest research from the New York Federal Reserve suggests that China's efforts to promote manufacturing and support its economy could have an impact on inflation in the United States, as credit flows to Chinese factories increase. The additional demand from Chinese manufacturers could push up prices of commodities and intermediate goods, weakening the U.S. dollar and putting upward pressure on inflation in the U.S. This could potentially delay expectations of monetary easing by the Federal Reserve. The research findings from the New York Federal Reserve contradict the view that China lead expansion in manufacturing will exert deflationary pressure on the U.S. However, the researchers also point out that any boost to China's economic output from this shift in credit flows could be temporary. Despite the EU's push for de-risking, Sino-German relations remain strongly. According to Beijing's envoy, 
Ambassador Wuken emphasized the close commercial ties between the two countries and highlighted that many German companies are still heavily investing in China. Last year, German automaker Volkswagen and electronics company Bosch Yijin invested over $1 billion in the Chinese electric vehicle market, while Siemens spent $158 million to expand a high-tech manufacturing plant. Direct German investment in China grew by 4.3 in 2020 on net, reaching a record-breaking 11. $9 billion, $13 billion. Who can believe that both Berlin and Brussels are increasingly understanding the risks associated with de-risking? And many German entrepreneurs disagree with this strategy. Private equity firms with stable core businesses are targeting alternative assets to generate excess returns. South China Morning Posey. In 2018, private equity firms in Asia are turning their attention to alternative assets such as private credit and infrastructure. As the total deal value and fundraising in the region's private equity market hit a 10-year low, the industry remains confident in its core business and continues to seek acquisition opportunities, but is more cautious in fund allocation. Private equity firms are interested in acquisitions because they offer active control ownership, which is more profitable than passive minority ownership in public stocks. China calls U.S. and U.K. hacker accusations political manipulation. The Globe and Mail said mail. China urges the U.S. and U.K. to stop politicizing cyber casualty issues and stop slandering China. Chinese officials strongly oppose and express dissatisfaction with the accusations and sanctions from the U.S. and U.K. These accusations allege that Beijing's cyber espionage activities have reportedly affected millions of people. The Chinese embassy in London claims that these accusations are completely fabricated malicious slander. China denies all hacking and cyber attack accusations made by other countries. The Chinese government has lodged solemn representations with relevant parties and will take necessary measures to safeguard China's legitimate rights and interests. Thank you for watching. The content presented above is the latest reports and analysis recommended by the Six Degrees team from Global Professional Media, think tanks, government agencies, and industry experts for more detailed information. Please visit the websites of these media outlets and think tanks. These contents do not necessarily reflect the position of Six Degrees Brief and should not be taken as recommendations for any decision making. Six Degrees Brief is an independent new media platform composed of professional journalists, scholars, and scientists. You can subscribe to various briefings according to your professional requirements at Six.Brief.com. You can receive Six Degrees Brief via mail from anywhere in the world.